Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Marianne Guevara and today we will be doing a continuation of my bookshop tour. And so we will be focusing on this shelf which houses my fantasy, some sci-fi, and then my graphic novels. So another mishmash of a shelf. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. I'm first going to show you uh, some books that I actually have hidden in the back. Uh, since uh, it's become kind of crowded, this shelf. So the first book in the back that I'm going to show you is Miranda and Caliban by Jacqueline Carey. This is a retelling of The Tempest by William Shakespeare, which I have not read yet. But uh, as a fantasy standalone, I thought this was really solid. So I saw a lot of reviews on this saying that it's quite slow. Um, but that's because they really... The book takes its time with developing its characters, particularly these two. So yeah. If you sort of like that, you know, retellings that focus more on character development um, and, you know, focus on unrequited love, I would recommend Miranda and Caliban. So the next book I have in the back is The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. I've read this and The Midwitch Cuckoos by him. Um, this one I prefer. This one deals with a comet that makes people, you know, blind and sentient carnivorous plant life. Uh, there are two sort of like ridiculous concepts, but uh, Wyndham makes it work to make a pretty good sci-fi classic. And then the next book from the back, we have The Return of Tarzan by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is the sequel to Tarzan of the Apes. Not as good as Tarzan of the Apes, but you know, it's still pulpy fun. And then in the back, we have two more that are hidden. So I'm just gonna take them out. So we have Scarlet by Marissa Meyer and then we have Winter by Marissa Meyer. These are books two and four in the Lunar Chronicles and I already read this series. I'm just trying to repurchase them in you know these covers which I really adore. I love the uh, new covers for these. Uh, they also have step backs. I don't know how people feel about step backs. I personally don't mind as long as there's pretty art you know, on the step back, I really don't care. I know some people can find them, I don't know, some people find them annoying, but I don't. So yeah, Lunar Chronicles is one like YA series that I really don't mind. I think they're pretty, you know, clever retellings, sci-fi retellings of various different fairy tales. So now we move on to the books that you can actually see on this shelf. And we're gonna start over here with one of my favorite YA series or just one of my favorite series in general and that is the Mirror Visitor Quartet. I will not go in depth on this series mainly because I devoted an entire video to them so if you want to know about, about my thoughts on this entire series go check that video out. Uh, so yeah for those who don't know this is a it's classified as a YA fantasy series. Uh, it was originally written in French and it's been translated in several languages. Um, I don't know how I feel about it being deemed YA because honestly with the themes it tackles and you know what it discusses I feel it's more adult but yeah it's marketed as YA. You, Whenever you hear people talk about it on um, the series they say YA. So anyway we have the first book A Winter's Promise and yes they all have beautiful covers. Then we have book two, The Missing of Claire de Lune. Probably my favorite out of this series. Yeah, probably my favorite. We have The Memory of Babel, book three. And then the highly controversial uh, book four, The Storm of Echoes. I love this series. Like I said, one of my favorites. Then moving on, we have some of Naomi Novik. These books are both sort of like loose retellings slash, you know, fantasy standalones. And I adore both of these. We have Uprooted by her, which is a loose retelling of, I believe, Beauty and the Beast. And then this one, is Spinning Silver, is a loose retelling of Rumpelstiltskin. Now, it's very odd whenever I hear people talk about these two books. I feel that people either love Uprooted but don't like Spinning Silver, or they love Spinning Silver, but they don't like Uprooted. I enjoy both. Like, both of these were just like... I think both of these were like for five stars for me. I very much enjoyed these. And I really don't like Little Mermaid retellings. Like, I've never been satisfied or impressed by any of them. But if Naomi Novik ever decided to do, like, a retelling of The Little Mermaid, I'd be so game for that. 
Moving on, we have The Last Unicorn, which is a fantasy classic. Some of you might remember the animated adaptation of this book that came out in the 80s. Uh, this one is really excellent, uh, very beautifully crafted, uh, but also bittersweet story because it deals with the loss of innocence, like themes such as that. So that's The Last Unicorn. And then we make a shift to sci-fi or speculative fiction. So first we have here is Harlan Ellison's I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. This is a collection of short stories. Uh, Ellison has such a very distinct voice. And if you have not read I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, I would recommend you check it out. But it's a pretty depressing uh, speculative fiction story. So yeah, there's that one. And then next to that, we have my SF Masterworks. So yeah, I really do enjoy this collection. I try to get my sci-fi classics in these editions. Uh, I really dig the covers. I love the pulpy illustrations and the garish coloring. I really do dig them. And they're a very distinct type of uh, classic, or at least uh, sci-fi classic aesthetic. So yeah, the first one that I have here is The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. This one was published in 1896. And this one, along with The Time Machine, are my favorite uh, Wells science fiction that I've read so far. I just love the horror atmosphere of this book in particular. Following The Island of Dr. Moreau, we have More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon. So this one was published in 1953. And this is my first and as of right now, my only Sturgeon but I am looking forward to reading more from him. Uh, this book, well, for one, is beautifully written, I have to say. And this one deals with the concept of sort of man's next step in evolution, in a way, like moving beyond just homo sapiens and all of that. Very interesting stuff. Uh, like I said, I would recommend. In fact, I would recommend all of these books that I have here um, in the SF Masterworks and on the shelf, honestly. Following that, we have I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. This came out in 1954, and this is just excellent. It's quite short, but uh, re pretty effective, I have to say. So this one deals with um, Robert Neville, who is considered basically the last man on Earth. Everyone else has turned into sort of, you know, vampires, and he's pretty much spending his day trying to survive. Um, I adore this book. The ending was just fantastic. This became a Will Smith film, which I haven't seen, but go check out the book. Then next to that, we have The Man Who Felt Earth by Walter Tevis, which came out in 1963, if I'm not mistaken. And you may have seen me talk about this book in a previous video, like long ago, comparing this to its film adaptation with, you know, directed by Nicholas Roeg and then starring David Bowie. Uh, but this one is an excellent, excellent sci-fi. Uh, definitely one of the more subtle ones because aside from, you know, the main character being um, a humanoid alien and then the presence of like alien technology, in many aspects it kind of just, it doesn't feel like a sci-fi. You kind of forget it is a sci-fi at times. But yeah, uh, I really enjoyed this one. It is bleak though, so there's that. Speaking of bleak books, we have Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This one came out in 1966. I know that some people have read this for school or maybe have studied it. Uh, I read this for leisure and this was heartbreaking. Uh, I, I, I did tear up at the end, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's a fave, but I don't think I could like bring myself to reread it. It is quite sad and it's a sci-fi that sort of once again looks into sort of the way we treat people who are, you know, perceived as different from us or we may consider lower than ourselves. It's just, yeah, it's it's a pretty sad book, not gonna lie. But uh, in my opinion, quite powerful. Next we have Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. This came out in 1968. Uh, this is the book that inspired Blade Runner. And if you've watched Blade Runner, I highly recommend that you check out the book because it is quite different. Next, we have The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, which came out in 1969. And it's one of those sci-fi classics that deals with the concepts of, you know, gender and sexuality. Uh, fascinating stuff and beautifully written. 
And then lastly, we have Mockingbird by Walter Tevis, which came out in 1980. And this is definitely one of the most uplifting sci-fis I've read. Sci-fis tend, or at least when it comes to like sci-fi classics, they some of them tend to go a bit in a sad or depressing uh, end. But Mockingbird, like I said, very, very uplifting. And it's strange how this same author uh, wrote The Man Who Fell to Earth, which, as I mentioned, is like one of the more bleaker sci-fis I've uh, read. But yeah, Mockingbird doesn't get a lot of like um, recognition or doesn't have a lot of people talking about it. But I would highly, highly recommend that you read this one. Uh, very good. Next, we have my graphic novels, and they're mainly horror. Um, for me, I I think the only graphic novel stories that I enjoy um, are horror ones. So yeah, we got some Junji Ito, some Gotenabe, and then we have uh, one collection by Emily Carroll. So the first one we have here is Uzumaki. This was my uh, introduction to Junji Ito. And I would recommend that if you want to start with, if you want to start Ito, you try Uzumaki. And then we have Shiver by him. This is another collection of like short stories. This one isn't like Uzumaki where in that one all the stories are interconnected. This one is just, yeah, different various stories of them, you know, obviously horror. And then next to that we have Venus in the Blind Spot. Next to that, we have Gotenabe. Now, Gotenabe is a fan of Lovecraft. He has done manga adaptations of a lot of his works. And unfortunately, we only have three of his adaptations, or technically two of his adaptations uh, in English. He has done several. He's done uh, The Color of Space. He's done Shadow out of um, Shadow of Rinsmith. Uh, just so many Lovecraft stories he has done. Uh, that are available in Japanese, I believe in Spanish, German, I think. But for some reason, we only have At the Mounds of Madness and then there's three stories in English. I don't know what Dark Horse is doing. They're really, you know, shuffling their feet and taking their time. But I'm wondering where are the new Gotenabe English translations? So yeah, it's, it's really annoying. But here we have uh, At the Mounds of Madness, part one. And then part two. And then this is a collection of three different stories. This one has the temple, um, uh, the hound, and I believe, yeah, the name of the city. Those are the three in here. Excellent, excellent adaptations. Uh, I love the artwork in here. I feel like when you are going to illustrate Lovecraft, you're going to need a more realistic style if it becomes like too cartoony uh it kind of just the horror dissipates and then finally on this shelf we have through the woods by emily carroll this is a collection of short stories all of them surrounding or dealing with the woods but yeah i actually dig this collection I really like graphic novels that are just short story collections, basically. And I wish uh, more authors uh, did that sort of thing. So, yeah. That is the end of this bookshelf tour. A bit shorter, but I adore this shelf. So, yeah. After this, it's going to be my TBR shelf. Uh, unless you want me to do this one, which is... Uh, devoted more to more of my childhood books but yeah if not I'll just move on to my TBR shelf so yeah once again thank you all for clicking on this video and checking it out uh, I'll see you on the next bookshelf tour at least the next video so yeah thank you and see you around